Hey, we thank God for that message today. It was a powerful, I mean, uh, for that praise service, a powerful, real powerful praise service this morning. And we give God the praise today. Amen. Amen. I am so glad to be here. Look like the sun is finally coming out. And it is a beautiful day. I appreciate everyone that came out to the house of God today. Amen. Today we're going to be dealing with a subject of don't be afraid of your dreams. Amen. Dealing with prophecy, dealing with uh, how God began to speak to his uh, people. Amen. Dealing with dreams and visions. Y'all know that I love talking about this subject of dreams and vision. I count it a joy because many things that the Lord has shown me, he'll show me in dreams. Amen. As a matter of fact, some of y'all, I'm encouraging people to keep a dream journal. journal. If you don't have one, I'm asking that you at least write your dreams down on your phone. Uh, you know, whenever you get to uh, dreams, write them down somewhere. Amen. Because it's coming up again. A lot of times God want to talk to people through dreams and vision. Amen. God, we ask that you just open up our understanding today as we open up the word of God today. Dealing with, don't be afraid of your dreams. Amen. Let's go to the word of God today. Let's go with the book of Joel. The book of Joel is after Hosea, after Daniel. In the Old Testament, Daniel. Then you got Daniel. Then you got Hosea. Then you should have um, the book of Joel. Amen. Let me know when you get there. I'm not quite done myself. Daniel, then Joel, you know, Hosea, and then Joel. So let's go to the Word of God. I'm almost there. I'm not quite there, but I will soon be there. Amen. Amen. Dealing with dreams and visions today. Because it's important, I want us to understand that God want to talk to his people. And sometime, I'm going to show you in the Word of God that God talks to whoever he want to talk to, when he want to talk to them. And sometimes, you don't even have to be spiritual for God to start dealing with you. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to show you the word of God. Let's go to the word of God today. Joel chapter number 2 and verse 28. And the word of God reads as follows. says, said, And ye shall, you shall know that I am the Lord, verse 27, in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. And none, of, none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I love that. Now this is the verse that I really want to focus on today. And it says it like this. It says it. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. We're living in that dissertation. Let's go to Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 17. To let you know that's prophetic about what was happening on the day of Pentecost. Let's go to Acts chapter number 2 and verse number 17. Whenever you get there, please say amen. Acts 2 and verse 17 basically is fulfillment of that scripture. Joel chapter 2 and verse number 28. Acts chapter number 2 and verse 17. You know, he, I love that because it's, I love to see the word of God basically confirms itself. Amen. I love to see the word of God confirms itself. Amen? Amen. Okay, so in Acts chapter 2, verse 17, are you there yet? Amen. Amen. And the word of God says it like this. It says, and it shall come to pass in the last day. Oh, no. Oh, let's stop. Let me, let's go to verse 16. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In other words, now Peter is beginning to teach these folks, but he's going to break it down and make it clear as a bell. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Oh, Joel. Joel, Joel. Amen. And it shall come to pass in the last days, said God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall, shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servant, servants, and on my handmaid, I will pour out in, that, in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Oh, Lord, I love that. We live in a day and age where we have seen that happen, even in our churches. Amen. The pouring out of the spirit of God. We've seen the prophetic words come forth. Amen. So today we're going to be dealing with, don't be ashamed of your, don't be afraid of your dreams. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter number 20. And verse number seven, one, one, one through seven. Amen. Dealing with dreams and vision. I one time preached a message about dreams and vision. I preached it when I was at another church, and I remember preaching that message about uh, Old Testament job, um, um, Joseph and the New Testament Joseph. 
how the guy basically operated with both of them in the same in the same operation in the same in the same gift of the gift of the uh, of dreams and visions. But let's go there real quick. See what's going to happen. Genesis chapter number twenty and verse one through seven. Amen. Amen. Let you know that God will talk to your enemy too. Did you not know God will talk to your enemy too? See, we think that God only talks to his people. He will talk to your enemy too. What? Ain't nobody ever told me that. Let's go to the word of God. I can prove it in the Bible. Genesis chapter 20 and verse number number one. And Abraham journeyed from this toward the south of the country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, sojourning in, in Gagar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, and Abimelech, king of, of Gigar, sent and looked and, and, and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, would thou, would thou slay also the righteous nation? And he and he not um, and, and said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she even, she uh, herself said, he is my brother. In the chamber of my heart, and in the sea of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I not, I, I, suffered, I suffered I not thee to touch her. Now that we restore the man and his wife, for he is a prophet, for he is a what? Abraham was a what? A prophet, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. Now he said this, but, and if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that is thine. So God talked to his enemy. See, the reason why Abraham lied, and Abraham hated him, <laughs> Abraham lied, and Sarah lied. I think it was Sister Miles that once said, he was telling, she was telling the children, I think, how, how did you put it? They was operating in a pervalence. And that's a lie. He was telling a lie. And God talked to his enemy. Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 37, let's turn over. I mean, Genesis chapter number uh, 30 and verse of while, number 24, let's turn over real quick. You know, with dreams and visions. So if you think that the only person God talks to is dreams, you're highly deceived. If you think that you're so righteous that the only person God can talk to in a dream is you, you're highly deceived. I remember I was working um, and with one man and he told me that he had a dream. And in the dream, he had a dream he was going downstairs. I said, man, you can get right. <laughs> in his dream, he was going downstairs. Like going down into the, you know, into the basement or something. I said, man, that must be God saying you need to get it right. You need to get it right pretty quick. He did that. He ain't died that long after that. But I told him he needed to get it right. Amen. He need to get right with God. Amen. But he had a dream that he was going downstairs. So God was talking to him and showing him things to come. Amen. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 31 and verse 24. Deal with that word. Are we there yet? 31 uh, and verse 24. I'm sorry. 31 and verse 24. And the word of God says it like this. And she called his name Joseph and said the Lord had added. That's not what I really want. I'm in the wrong chapter. 31 and verse 24. Here we go now. Here we go. And God came to Laban, the Syrian, in a dream by night. And said unto him, Take heed that thou speak not to, aid to Jacob, either good or bad. <laughs> then Laban overtook Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the mount, and a band with his brother and pitched in the mount of Gilead. And the band said, but I, I don't even want to go into all this stuff. But, but God had told him, in other words, don't touch him, just leave him alone. Don't say to him, good or bad. Whatever you need, you'll get whatever you need. Just go ahead and try to get it. But, you know, God was living, giving him that free, but he said, don't speak to him. Don't say nothing, get don't rebuke Jacob. <laughs> Amen? Amen? See, sometimes God will tell your enemies, don't rebuke you. Sometimes we gotta watch ourselves with dreams. If you start dreaming that you was God was correcting you in a dream about some anointed man or woman of God, you need to take it. 
If God showed you in a dream that you was in error, you need to come to God and you need to come to that person and tell him. That's right. Yes. God was showing his enemy stuff. Wow. A lot of people don't believe God only speaks to people of God, saints and prophets. Yes, he, he speaks to saints and prophets by that too. But he also can speak to your enemies and rebuke them. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the word of God. Amen? Genesis chapter number 37. I love this. I want y'all, because I want us to stop depending on somebody else's word to guide us. I want us to stop. Can I be real? I love the spirit of prophecy. I love the gift of prophecy. I ain't running behind no prophets. If the prophet come to town, baby, then it's come to town. Now, if God lead me to go up under the tent, I won't go. But I ain't, listen to me, I, I was taught this in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the holy church. And I came to, signs and wonders follow, thanks to God. We don't follow signs and wonders. See, the same God that talked to the prophet can talk to you. And I use prophets as confirmation. A lot of times, not revelation. I'm not going to change my life. I ain't going to change my job. I ain't going to change my car unless God said. A lot of times, I ain't going to say God can't show the prophet. Now, yes, he can. But most of the time with me, I don't know about you. Most of the time with me, God has used that prophet to speak something God already showed me. He confirmed it. And a lot of times, we want to word from the prophet, but we ain't saw God. And if God ain't speaking, don't be so quick to get a word from the prophet. Your pen drop. Genesis chapter 37, verse 1. And Jacob dwelled in the land where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old was feeding, his, he feeding the flock with his brother and the lad was with the sons of Belhar and with the sons of Zelpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their vile report, their evil report. Joseph was a tattletale. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Sometimes when you're doing evil, you need to tell it sometimes. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his brothers, all the children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when, and see, here we go. And when his brethren saw their fathers loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told him, he told him dream. And he told in his brother, and they hated him yet the more. Sometimes it don't hurt to tell your family your dream. He didn't tell everybody. He only told his close friend, his family. But sometimes when you tell your family your dream, sometimes jealousy and envy comes in. He wasn't an error about telling his family because what he said is going to have a direct effect upon his family. They was an error for being jealous of what God was showing him. Amen. Amen. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream, which I bring you. For behold, I was, I was binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheep uh, stood round about and made obedience to my sheep. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars made obedience unto me, obedience unto me, and he told it to his father and to his brother, and his father rebuked him. And said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brother indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brother envied him, but his father observed the same. See, his brother was sort of young, and then even though they were older than him, they envied him, but his father started thinking, maybe that's something to this. Because the Bible says he observed the same. He rebuked him, but he observed the same. Amen. Don't tell everybody your dream. Everybody can't handle your dream. I repeat, don't
home, tell everybody your dream. Everybody ain't gonna pat you on the back because of your dream. Everybody ain't happy when God starts talking to you. Amen. Hmm. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter number 30, uh, uh, 40, verse 1 through 5. Dealing with don't be afraid of your dreams. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of your dreams. But I'm sure not telling everybody my dream. Sometimes it's wisdom just to be quiet and do what God showed you you need to do. You will see it when it comes to pass. I will share with now what I'm going to do, but I'll share with everybody what I'm going to do. Because I know y'all can pray for me. I hope that you're praying for me and not praying again. If I can't trust Mella, I can't trust nobody. Come on now, what did Jesus say? He looked at his, his father and mother that came to him, I mean, his, his siblings that came to him standing with God, and he said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my devil that do the will of my father? Which is if I tell you my dream and you best out me in my back, it's on you, ain't on me. If a brother or sister in the house of God tell you their dream and you backstab them in the back, it's on you. It ain't on God. It ain't on them. Amen. Because you're supposed to be praying that it come to pass. Right. Genesis chapter 40 and verse 1 through 5. Are we there yet? And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and the baker had, had, offered their, had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wrapped against the two of his, uh, his officials, officers. And against the chief of the butler and against the chief of the baker. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison and place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them. And they continued a season in the war. And they dreamed the dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream, and the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which was bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were saying. And he asked Pharaoh's officers. That was with him in the war of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpretation of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretation belong to God. Tell me, I tell him, he tell, tell them, uh, okay, he says, He tell me then of uh, them. I pray you, tell me the dreams, in other words. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said, said to him, in my dream, behold, the wine was before me, and the wine was uh, three, uh, the wine was three branches, and it was also, and, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. And I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup. And I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet wherein three days shall Pharaoh lift up your lift, the, lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand. After thou, after the, after the formal manner, when thou was in his in, in as his butler, I'm paraphrasing. But the thing, oh Lord Jesus, but think on me when it shall be well with thee. And show kindness, I pray thee, unto me. And make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Amen. He got to forget. Verse 16. And when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto Joseph, he told him his dream. But see, I'm not, for the second time, I'm not going to repeat it. He is not going to end that way. In three days, Pharaoh's going to kill him, going to hang him. So every dream is not to be interpreted the same way. Amen. 
Every dream has its own individual interpretation. Every dream has its own, when God is in the dream, every dream has its own individual interpretation. Just because God gave Sister Butterby a nice dream and it came to pass, just like Sister Butterby, don't think that you having a similar dream is going to have the same effect. It was tailored to that individual's needs and situation. That's why I have a problem with people always prophesying. Can I be real? Some things that God show you ain't all good. Now we understand that the prophetic gift in the New Testament is for exhortation and comfort. But everything God show you ain't good. If God, oh, let me say this softly. If God show you somebody's death, you better be trying to work on them so they can get saved. You can hear a pin drop. If God show you that somebody is not in the right place, don't ignore it. Proudly, skillfully approach them and tell them, I had a dream about you, brother, and it wasn't good. God is sending the warning so they can get it right. God is sitting in the morning where they can straighten up their lives. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 12, verse number 6 through 8. The book of Numbers chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Did it with Moses and Aaron and then Mary. Now I want to say this to y'all. God did talk to Aaron, apparently. And apparently God talked to Mary. He, all, he did not only talk to Moses by himself, but let me let y'all in on a little secret. Just because God talked to you, oh Jesus, just because God talked to you don't mean that you have the authority and have the favor as, it, as one sometimes is in leadership. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. The only Ethiopians I know is Monisha's. <laughs> Leave that alone. So Moses had married him a black woman. And they had a beef with it. It don't say because she was black that was a problem. I don't know what, what the problem was, but I know one thing, they had a problem with that lady. And guess what? They talked to and they said, has the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. I believe that's true. Listen to me. I honestly believe that God spoke by Aaron and God spoke by Mary. But just because it's true don't mean they give you license to put your mouth on a man or woman of God. That's right. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which was upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto, oh here we go, unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Mary. If he wasn't talking before, he showed sure talking now. If he wasn't talking before, he showed sure, y'all just got a kind a direct line to God right now. Amen. Come out ye three uh, out unto the tabernacle of congregation. And, they, and the three came out. And God, and the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Mary, and they both came forth. And he said unto them, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision. The language of the Spirit is dreams and visions. Amen. I will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, which is faithful in all my house. Faithfulness goes a long way with God. Don't ever think that you miss services and God don't see it. 
Don't ever think that you're going to go and miss a service and I ain't going to call and let Pastor John know. I ain't going to let Pastor John know what's going on. I just don't feel like you think God saw it before I saw it. Amen. Baby, this ain't witchcraft. This is the Bible. Amen. See, I don't understand people that give their boss more respect than they give their leader. They're spiritually who rock, who watch for your soul. Right. Man, I'm praying that the devil don't. He said, what, what did Jesus tell, tell, Philip, uh, tell, tell Peter? The devil desired that he may sift you as weak. But I pray for you. I pray for you. And when it comes to accountability, God is watching every time you miss and don't call. Yo, I don't believe that. You're checking out your faithfulness. And God checked out Moses' faithfulness. He's the most faithful person in all the world. Wow. With, and with him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not by dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then was thou yet not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the angel of God, Lord, killed him against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from out the tabernacle. And behold, Mary became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked at Mary. And behold, she was leprous. Now look at this. Now watch how hypocritical Aaron is in this particular situation. He gonna start repeating quick. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us. Wherein we have what done foolishly, and when we have sinned. We gotta be careful when we put our mouth on. Pastor John got to be careful what he put his mouth on and check this out. You got to be careful what you put your mouth on too. Amen. I said it once. I said it a thousand times. In church, we talk too much. We have Holy Ghost conversation that ain't Holy Ghost feel. <laughs> That's alright. Let's go to the Word of God. Amen. So God began to show him now I begin to see, I begin to read, I was in my Bible study last night, and I begin to see when God started dealing with Moses. Oh Lord, you turn to come chapter. A lot of times, in a, in a lot of times like in Exodus, you begin to read, and I'm going to show y'all how God was dealing with Moses. So it's so interesting. And the Lord said, and the Lord said. Even in Leviticus, a lot of times, when God really began to deal with Moses, Moses was speaking as the Lord said. And you begin to read the first part of a lot of chapters. You hear stuff like this, Leviticus chapter 8, verse number the number 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Leviticus chapter 9, they keep on going, and then sometimes they keep on going, and you know, Exodus so it does it a lot. Oh, he, he said, and the Lord said, a lot of chapters will start out, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, in other words, Moses wasn't doing this on his own. Amen. The Lord was actually talking to Moses. Amen. And what the Lord said to Moses, he wrote it down, a pen it down. You go back and read it. In Exodus, some of the scriptures, and you know, the chapter start off, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, and the Lord said. And the Lord said. Sometimes people are operating, and the Lord ain't said nothing. Sometimes you gotta wait on God to say something. Amen. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number. Um, uh, let's go a little further. Deuteronomy chapter number thirteen and verse one. I know we did them in a lot of old chapters. We're gonna get to new eventually. But I want us to be a, be a wise, be advised that God is going to talk to you. God is going to show you things, and it behooves you to write it down. Amen. Let's go down real quick. Are we there yet? Deuteronomy chapter number thirteen and verse one. Amen. If there arise a prophet among you. If thou rise among you a prophet, or a dream a dream, and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign of wonder come to pass, wherefore, wherefore, wherefore he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which they have not known, and let us but serve them. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of the prophet. And of the dream of dream. 
For the Lord your God proveth thee, approveth you, to know whether ye will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Have you ever heard prophecies that contradict the word of God? Brother, I see the Lord is going to bless you with a wife. I'm perceiving that the Lord is going to bless you with a wife. You need to kindly lean on to the prophet here, especially speaking to Mike. Man of God, I'm already married. <laughs> Unless you know my wife going to die, that prophecy is a lie. <laughs> Have you ever seen prophets fish with them? Yeah. Uh, um, are you married? Uh, That's a question. Are you? you know, I, I perceive that. Do you have a house? Yeah, baby, I have a house. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir, yes, I have a house. Uh, are you employed? Yes, I'm working at the pool. Yes, I'm working. Wow. Okay, now I can understand. And they say, I see you get with another house. I receive it. Send it on down, Lord. Send it on down. Lord, let the Holy Ghost come on down. <laughs> but you got to be careful when people start fishing. If you ever in a prophetic line, if he is a prophet and she is a prophet, they don't have to fish, baby. It's either thus said the Lord or it ain't thus said the Lord. Your pen drop. Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the book of um, Judges, chapter 7, verse 13 through 15, dealing with this prophetic word. Dreams and vision. I want y'all to think about this. I want y'all to think when the Lord is talking to you. And you need to know that the Lord is talking to you. Sometimes, if you don't know this, write it down anyway, see, and pray over it. Because just like God can get in your dreams, the devil can get in your dreams too. Amen. Has anybody ever woke up and had a nightmare and said, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, that was a dream. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I've had dreams like that, too. That's the devil trying to get in my dream. Amen? Amen. And the way to help that sometimes, I, you know, I try to read my word every time I go to bed. I don't always make it. I read it sometimes during the day. But I try to read the scripture so that the last thing on my mind is the word. Uh, numbers, chapter number 12. You know what Judges chapter 7, verse 13. Are we there yet? I want y'all to take notes on this because it's coming up again. Judges chapter 7, and verse 13 through 15. Then with dreams of vision. Because I don't want y'all running out the prophets. Did I say that? I do not want spirit filled saints of God in this church running after prophets. <laughs> Let's go there. Are we there yet? Verse 13. Amen. See what the word of God says. And the Bible said, Gideon was come. Behold, that was a man. Now Gideon is, Gideon sometimes was looking for a fleece a little bit, but he was doing what God told him to do anyway. And God sent him to spy the enemy's camp. And when Gideon gets to the enemy's camp, this is what's going to happen. And when Gideon, verse number, number uh, Judges chapter 7, verse 13, and when Gideon come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dream a dream. And lo, a cake of boiling bread trembled or tumbled into the host of the Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it failed and overturned it. And the tent lay, 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 lay alone. And his fellow answered and said, This ain't nothing, this is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hands has God delivered the medium, delivered medium, and all the host. Now nah, listen to this. You got a big old tent. I don't care if it ain't that big. You got a little tent. A little tent, make it a little tent. And a grain of water we roll into that tent and knock that tent down. God showed me something. Take heed to this. We so scared about what the enemy think. I ain't stuck no enemy. I shouldn't stuck no enemy. See, God showed the enemy what he was about to do. 
and they was powerless to stop it. Now, I ain't say you go and tell your enemy everything. No, I'm not talking about that. When God show your enemy something, and the enemy had no power to stop him. Man, he could have went and told his captain, he could have went and told the, the general, oh, oh I, I, I had a dream, I, we need to be watching for, for Gideon. No, he said, no, this is going to happen. God showed him that we're going to be destroyed, and ain't nothing you can do about it. When God pronounced a blessing on you, Ain't no devil in Hades that can stop you. When God pronounced the blessing on you, ain't no wagon tongue can stop it. Ain't no wagon tongue can stop you. Well, Pastor, my enemies found out that God was going to promote me, so they fired me on the job. You know what that means? That means that one day God going to make you the head and not the tail. And the same people that fired you may one day have to come to you and get something from you, like a job. I got the book to bag me up. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to let's go to uh, uh, Genesis chapter fifty and verse number twenty. Somebody worried about what the enemy think, baby. You gotta stop worrying about the enemy. He'll show the enemy he gonna bless you, and they can't do nothing. He showed them what he was gonna do, and they couldn't do nothing. They interpreted the dream themselves, and they were still powerless to stop you. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 50 and verse 20. Stop worrying about your enemies. And start praying for your enemies like Jesus said. Jesus said, pray for your enemies and those that despitefully use you. Amen. Now the story about Joseph, everybody know how low down his brother's going to be. They're going to send him to the enemy's hand. And by them sending them into the enemy's hand, they meant evil doing that. They was wicked and low down. But the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20, but as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring the past as it is this day to save much people alive. They were sustained by the wisdom that God gave Joseph. His low down dirty brothers had to come to Egypt for something to eat and he sold it to them so they could eat. So they were sustained by his wisdom, but they were being low down and dirty. Don't worry about people being low down and dirty to you. Let them be low down and dirty to you, and then you pray for them. Because the story ain't over yet. Let's go to Isaiah. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse number 3. God has shown some of y'all stuff in the dream, but y'all are knowing it. God is showing some of y'all stuff in the dream, and you're not writing it down. You're not putting it aside. He's already told you what he's going to do. And until you take heed, and when it happens, and the shell's going to pass, it's going to be on you. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on you. Amen? Amen? Let's go to the Word of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse number 3. For a dream, oh, I want to read all of this. Let's, let's read. Let's read 1 through 3. Keep thy foot when thou go into the house of God. And be more ready to hear it than to the guilt of sacrificing fools. For they consider not that they do evil. Be, be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and now upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be true. Yeah. Use wisdom when you have a conversation in your testimony. Don't. Run your mouth off the house of God with your testimony. Let your word be true. When I was in the, and I'm not asking that y'all do this. Y'all, you got something on baby, you better tell it. God done something good for you, better tell it, you better tell it. Don't hold back God's testimony. It belongs to God. You give me glory to God. But you shouldn't have to take 30 minutes to testify. When I was in the Pentecost church, God saved, guess what they done? Hold the church. The brothers stand up. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! God is good! That's my testimony. How about this? Thank you, Jesus! I ain't telling y'all to talk about like that. <laughs> now, you got to tell the goodness of God, too, now. What you thinking, Jesus? Well, go ahead and tell me why you think him, okay? That's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm saying glory to God and sit down. 
Okay, that's all right. You'll get it later. You going you are gonna get it later. Trust me. Isaiah chapter number twenty nine and verse number eight. Isaiah chapter twenty nine and verse eight. We gotta be careful. Amen. Oh, I didn't even finish reading that verse. Lord, help me. Okay, let's go and read the last verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 5, number 5. Uh, and the word of God said, are we there yet? Chapter 5 and verse 3. For a dream coming through a multitude of visions. And a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. Have y'all ever, I remember, I remember, I definitely remember y'all. I, I remember when I was a kid, my uncle sometimes would take us to pick uh, peas and, and pick pecans. And, and when I go to dream, when I sleep, all I can see is some bees and pecans in my dream. I used to go pick, I don't know about y'all, I'm from the country. We used to go out there in the, in the blackberry patch and pick, and pick blackberries. And so make those good old blackberry pies and that blackberry cobble. Oh, Jesus, make me home. But anyway, what I want to say this. Sometime when I closed my eyes, the only thing I saw was that blackberry patch. And picking all the things. Yeah, that would look like it's got a little bit bit by a snake or something. You know, I'm going to throw it outside. See, because it was a multitude of business. Sometimes dreams come from multiple witness. Yes. Every dream God ain't talking to you. Some stuff is just a multitude of witness. Yes. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse number 8. Isaiah 29 and verse 8. See the word of God in the 29 and verse 8. And we're there yet? Dealing with dreams that don't be afraid of an interpretation of dreams sometimes. 29 and verse 8. See what the Bible say. Amen? Amen. Amen. It is as even it's, it shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty. Or as when the thirsty man dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul has appetite. So he shall, so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against. Mount Zion. Zion. Here we go. Sometimes dreams can come because of physical needs and desires in our flesh. That's the Bible, y'all. That's the Bible. That's the Word. Did I read that again? It's the Word. It is even as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth. But he awakened and his soul is empty. Uh, when the thirsty man drank, dreaming, and behold, he drank it. But he awakened and behold, he is faint. Every dream ain't of God. Every dream is not of God. Amen. Let's go to Daniel chapter 1, verse number 17. We're going to get to the New Testament in a minute. But see, in the book of Daniel, God deal with certain people specifically in dreams and interpretation of dreams. Amen? Daniel is one of those people. The prophet Daniel is one of those people. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. Amen? Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. Talk about the four. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. And as for these four children... God gave them knowledge and skill and all. Learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. That's what his gifts was in. Daniel's gifts was in, was in dreams and visions. Amen. Amen. A couple more scriptures and then we're done. Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 5. The king answered and said under, under Cali, the thing is gone from me if, if, if ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation of ye shall be cut in pieces and the house shall be made a dunghill. The king was hard. He was a hard king. Now we can read chapter. He was a hard king. Amen. But if ye shall show the dream and the interpretation of ye shall receive the gift of me gifts and reward and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and the interpretation of it. See, Daniel's going to eventually give an interpretation of the dream. I don't know. You told me something like that. I don't even know if I could go and sleep. You told me that. I'd be scared to even go to sleep. <laughs> well, God gave Daniel the interpretation of it. Amen? Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 20 and 1 and verse 20 and we're wrapping it up. I want y'all to understand 
God is a God that loves us. And I want you to, I once asked one of my pastors, I said, which one is more important? A prophetic word or a written word? And guess what the pastor told me? He said, they're both the same. If God is speaking, he's speaking. Amen. See, either he's speaking in these 66 books, or he's speaking to you personally. Receive it if he's speaking. Receive it if God, why don't we, why don't people fight the word of God? Man, I've seen people fight the word of God and they suffer for fighting the word of God. See, if you got a prophetic word to me, I'm willing to, I'm open to receive it. I'm going to write it down, I'm going to check it to the word of God, and I'm going to check it out. Amen? Amen? Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. Dealing with Joseph. And then I got one more scripture, then we're done for the day. That was a quick one. Because I want y'all to start getting in the habit of asking God to talk to you. And stop looking to somebody else for an interpretation and for a dream. And for revelation and for epiphany. I believe that God can talk to you. Jesus said in the book of John, My sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. My sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, talking about whether or not to take your, uh, Mary to be his wife. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And she shall bring up a son, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sin. Amen. Last scripture, Acts chapter 16, verse number 9. Can I be real? I want to let y'all know something. Paul is going to get into a situation. How many of y'all know that God talked to Paul? He appeared to Paul and rode to the master. Jesus did and he began to instruct Paul. But see, Paul is going to be in a situation where God ain't really saying nothing. God ain't gave no prophet to come by apparently. And God's going to show Paul in the dream which way to go. He could have just spoke to Paul. He didn't. He ain't going to speak to Paul. He going to give him a dream. See, because Paul understood when you're dealing with God, God don't always operate the same way. Stop thinking that God is going to always operate the same way. Let God be God and do what he want to do. You just receive it when he does it. Genesis, I mean, uh, Acts chapter 16 and verse 9. Oh, Hallelujah. Verse 7. Let's start verse 7. After they was coming to Mysia, they had uh, saved to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. Oh, stop right there, Pastor John. Every time you feel led to go somewhere and outreach, you better sometimes see God. Because just because you feel like hitting certain, certain areas, God may, say, may, may tell you, don't go today. He, the Spirit, wait a minute. I thought God wanted everybody to be saved. But the Spirit suffered it not. And they came and they, and, and they passed by 